Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome to another video. Today, I wanted to go over five things that I've actually learned from being unemployed now. For those of you guys who don't know, I was unemployed starting in June of 2020 due to COVID. Unfortunately, you know, working the IT job, there was a lot of weird things going on where companies had to go remote. And at the end of the day, things just weren't working out with me and my employer. We couldn't really keep me. He needed to downsize the team. So ultimately I was the first one to go. And ever since then, then I've been going full time into YouTube, Instagram, and learning how to code so that ultimately I could try to find a job in the space and either create a full-time income, which was is going to take time still for YouTube and Instagram, or sharpen my skills, get it to a certain point where I can actually find a job as a software engineer or front-end web developer. So ever since then, I've been doing this whole thing, and there is a lot of things that unemployment has taught me, and it's made me a better person at the end of the day. I credit a lot of what I have become as a person due to the fact that I was unemployed through 2020. I don't think I would have necessarily been in a position to learn these lessons and learn these concepts if I hadn't been unemployed and still had a job. There's just a, a different aspect that unemployment brings, especially in a pandemic when everything is kind of up in the air and you're not really sure what's going on. You're not really sure what tomorrow is going to bring. You're not really sure what your financial stability is going to look like down the line if this kind of keeps going. The first thing that unemployment has taught me, and I think this is a very big one, is that it showed me how hard it is to actually start your own business and make money. That's something that I will never take take for granted and always, always just kind of understand that that process is a very, very hard one. It's not something that comes easy. And you know, from Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, whatever you guys are looking at in terms of social media, understand that whatever businesses that the people you're watching have created is ultimately based off of other failures that they've had in the past. So that could be the sixth iteration of the business that they've created, or they've taken lessons from past businesses they try to create to, in order to create this one that you're seeing now. It's a fine, it's not even a finished product yet. It is a culmination of the lessons that they've learned in the past. And I think that's something that I've definitely learned is starting a business when you're unemployed in order to create some sort of income from it is very, very hard when you're starting from the ground and trying to go up. It's it's a grind. It's a hustle. It's a journey and it's never ending process. Something that we need to understand as people is that, you know, things don't come easy if you want it. You know, the things that do come easy aren't the things that are worth having. So in terms of the business side of things, it's definitely something that I've just cherished and has humbled me in the sense that, you know, creating all of this that is going on right now, creating the apparel store, creating the community that we have, you know, going through sponsorships and things on YouTube and Instagram. This is a business in and of itself. And it's very, very fun to go through, but it also is stressful at times and can be and is very, very hard to run. So that's something that has definitely taught me in terms of like what unemployment has brought to me for sure. The second thing that is very, very big that unemployment has taught me is that it showed me how much mental toughness you really have to have and how hard it is to find a job once you're unemployed. Now, obviously take that with a grain of salt. It really depends on what industry you're in and what you're going for. But in the terms of being a software dev and being a self-taught one at that, it's very, very difficult. It can be very stressful. It can be very mentally taxing when you are unemployed. You don't know what your financial situation is going to look like. And on top of that, you're trying to find a job without a degree and you're trying to make people credible. But at the same time, during the pandemic in 2020, which we're obviously still going through companies are losing their budget you know they don't have a lot of risk that they can take on someone who might be self-taught as opposed to someone who has a college degree or already has experience so i totally understand the company's aspect of that but for me personally it took a lot of mental toughness for me to kind of grit through that and just keep going throughout the whole year to make sure that my skills were up to par and that i wasn't getting discouraged by the fact that i am not competitive in the terms of you know all the candidates that are coming in for these interviews and things it's just going to be very very difficult but that mental toughness is the aspect that kept me going. It's what kept me hungry to ultimately strive for a job at the end of the day. And had it not been for that mental toughness, I don't know where I'd be right now. I don't even know if I'd be making YouTube videos or Instagram anymore. I just feel like a failure. So that's one thing that unemployment has definitely taught me is that you need to stay strong mentally in order to keep going because it can be very scary. It can be very depressing. It can be very frustrating, but at, you just got to keep moving. You have to keep moving in the right direction. Otherwise, a lot of the emotions and feelings that you have in your head is going to consume you and 
you're just going to give up on that dream that you had ultimately. So that's something that definitely has increased in strength through this whole unemployment journey. The third thing, which I think is also, I mean, all of these topics are going to be very, very important. But the third one is it's taught me to stay present in the moment and not focus too much on the past or the future all too much. And that's one thing that I really, really did a lot of was focusing a lot on the future, especially again, being unemployed, you focus on what your future is going to look like, what tomorrow is going to potentially bring, what you want to do and achieve in the future, which is fine. It's fine to have goals. It's fine to, in a sense, daydream and come up with how your future is going to look like. But when it comes to trying to build something for yourself or trying to learn something new in order to get to where you want to be, you have to stay present. You can't focus too much on the future. You definitely can't focus on the past. What's in the past is done. Nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can change. What you can focus on is what you do right now, what you do today in order to make tomorrow better, in order to make the next month better, in order to make the next year better. That's what's important. The only thing you can do in order to make tomorrow better is focus on what you're doing today. Are you learning something new? Are you getting out of your comfort zone? Are you doing what you need to be doing on your personal journey, on your personal roadmap in order to get to where you want to be tomorrow? One step closer to the end goal tomorrow. And you just keep compounding that over and over and over again as the days go by. That's what's important right now is that especially when you're in a scary situation, when you're essentially life is on the line in terms of providing for your family, providing for yourself, living, you know, in California, living costs is humongous. So, I mean, like, had it not been for my parents here, I'd be definitely on the streets right now. But, you know, that's something that you have to take into consideration. That's why focusing on what you need to do today and putting all your chips into that, putting all your effort into that, making those sacrifices that you need to make is very, very important, especially from what it's taught me is that if I had not focused, if I did not put the amount of energy and effort into what I'm doing here on YouTube, Instagram, learning how to code everything that I'm doing right now, then nothing that I'd be doing or nothing that I have at this very, very moment would even be here if it wasn't for that energy. So it's, you know, one thing that you should focus on, especially if you're in the same or similar situation as I was, is that focusing on the present more so than the past or the future is very, very important aspect that you need to potentially adopt in your life if you are idolizing the future or focusing too much on the past. The fourth thing that it's taught me is it's taught me how to prioritize work-life balance and the importance of taking breaks. Burnout is a huge thing that we talk about in our community and in general, you know, it's not just with coders or developers, it's with everybody that has some sort of creative work or now that we're all working from home, it's very, very easy to just burn out from your work. You're around it all the time. You want to do it all the time. With the workaholic such as myself, I just love to work. I know nothing else but work. It, it's what I love to do. So it's very, very easy to get carried away with your work and not go hang out with your friends, not play some video games or watch TV show just to wind down and relax. It's very easy to get carried away with that stuff and just work from nine all the way to nine. You know what I mean? Like it gets very easy to do that. And that's something that I've definitely done in the past. So throughout the year of 2020, I found myself burning out a ton. I found myself just working overtime, 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 and it wasn't healthy. It wasn't good for me. I burned out a lot. It took me weeks before I could come back to work and start coding again, making videos again. It was just really, really bad. And it wasn't healthy, like I said. And that's where the balance side comes into it. It's really taught me how to prioritize. Okay, I'm going to work today, but I'm going to cut it at 5 p.m. And I'm just going to go, uh, I don't know, watch a TV show if I wanted to, or watch a movie or go hang out with my friends and play video games. Maybe, you know, obviously not maybe hanging out all the time, but you no, know, go work out something to take me away from work and something that takes my mind off of, all right, what's the next thing I need to do? It's okay. I need to unwind. I need to do something that relaxes me a little bit. So that's something that I definitely, definitely prioritize more so now in terms of creating a better work-life balance for myself in order to stay healthy mentally and physically because burnout as some of you guys may have experienced already and if you haven't try to avoid it like the plague it is the worst thing that could happen it's the most demoralizing thing that may come up in your lives and in your careers work-life balance is very very important the one thing that kind of takes away from that is you know is there's a difference between working hard and working smart sometimes it's not all about hard work working smarter is still working hard you know what i mean you need to understand and balance the both of those. If you're working smarter, you're getting things done more efficiently in a shorter amount of time. If you're working hard, sure, that's really, really good. But how hard are you working to the point where you're pushing past your threshold? You have a limit. Everyone has their own limits. Everyone is different in terms of how much they can handle, but don't go past that limit, right? Work hard to a certain point, but also work smart. And the last thing that I think that I've, it's taught me is that creating opportunities for yourself is something that's very, very important. In my specific situation, you know, I'm unemployed. I work for myself essentially, and I have nothing else that's really, really happening or bringing in money in that position. That's really, really forced me to go out of my comfort zone and create these opportunities that 
were never presented to me before. Nothing is going to come to me and no one is going to come to me and hand something as as in the form of an opportunity to be like, here, you deserve this. Come take this. Not going to happen. I don't have any credibility to me. I don't have any work behind me. I need to go out and create them. I need to go out and do the work, create the content, create the post, do other things that expose my brand and my personal brand to other people in order for them to see that, hey, there is a potential opportunity here. Let's do something. Let's work together. Let's collab, right? It's it's very important for me to branch out, do the things that I never wanted to do. You know, I, I'm a very introverted person. It may be hard to believe, but I'm a very introverted person. I don't like talking to people. And I it say that very loosely, right? I, of course, I love talking to people. I love talking to you guys. But if I'm a if I am in a social environment, you know, I shut down. I get very, very quiet. I don't like conversating with people just because I get a lot of anxiety from it. And throughout the year of 2020, I forced myself to network to people. I forced myself to talk to people. Hence the podcast, which season two is coming out soon. The podcast is where I go talk to strangers, essentially, in the community, conversate with them, network with them, talk with them, understand what their journey looks like. And that's in turn really, really helped me branch out, get out of my comfort zone and kind of blossom in the sense that I'm now able to just talk to people, vibe with people and kind of get get a sense of their background, you know, get to know them a little bit better. Talk about what we do, talk about a process, talk about their process, how they do things, how I do things, right? It's it's now full on conversation that I'm now able to have that before I was never able to do. And then in turn has created opportunities that I've been very blessed to have. So that's like one of the biggest things that I think that I've taken away from being unemployed and being on my own is that these opportunities would not have come had I been quiet and stagnant and not done anything with my life. Creating opportunities for yourself is very important important. Understand that no one's going to give anything to you. Nothing is handed to you and nothing is free. Go out and create those opportunities. You miss hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. So I went out and took my shots. I missed some, I got some. Those are opportunities created. And those are opportunities I'll never, never forget. Those are opportunities that would never have come if I had not done anything. So very, very blessed, very, very grateful and happy that I've branched out of my comfort zone and gotten those opportunities for sure. So those are the five things that I've definitely learned through unemployment. And I'm very grateful for them. I would not be where I am if I had not learn these lessons and taking it away from them. I spent a little bit of the first couple of weeks of 2021 to reflect on 2020 and see that, you know, I've definitely grown as a person because of it. And unemployment seems scary. It is scary, but I think that you can definitely take positives from anything. And through unemployment, I've definitely taken a lot, but those are some of the top five that I've taken away from being unemployed through the year of 2020. If you guys enjoyed that video, please hit the like button and subscribe. It would definitely help me out. If you guys want to conversate, if you guys are unemployed yourself, hit me down in the comments and tell me what things you may have learned or taken away from being unemployed. It's definitely a scary situation, but I know that all of us in our own circumstances or situations can take away something that is a positive and walk away with something that we've learned. So hit me down in the comments with some of that, but that's going to do it for today. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.